Now, Gaussian copula is a very, very powerful model. Or the, uh, so, let's focus on only the idea of copula first. We'll talk of Gaussian copula in a bit. Now, when you say the copula models, these are something which are required whenever we have to study the ideas of joint probabilities of random variables. Now, since we are talking from a credit risk perspective, we can think of this from the joint probability of default between two quantities or two or more random variables. So that way we have, let's say, two loans which you are looking at. But finally, we want to look at it from an overall perspective, isn't it? Now, since we are interested on that overall perspective, it is the joint probability of distribution which makes a lot of sense. And in, in simple words, joint probability is the probability of two, I mean, the events happening together. Now, a copula model is something which is going to help us model these kind of joint events. Now, why copula model comes to our rescue is because if we have, let's say, two random variables, and if we try to work on joint distributions directly without making a transformation which copula recommends, that can make the calculation difficult. So that way, remember that any kind of transformation which we do as a part of analytics or credit risk management as well, we should try to simplify things, not the other way around. So if we use these two random variable distributions directly and try to model a joint probability, it can be a nightmare. So to make life simple, we use the idea of copulas, which take the incoming distribution, transform it in a certain way or into a certain distribution, which is very comfortable for us to handle, and then try to model a joint probability of distribution. And that is the beauty of copula models. Now, as a part of our discussion, we will focus only on Gaussian copula. Because there are different forms of copula models available, but Gaussian copula is something which is a good start. It's easy to understand. We will stick to Gaussian copula. Now, from the word Gaussian copula, you might have guessed, right, that the word Gaussian points us to normal distribution. So, Gaussian copula will rely on normal distribution of each variable. So, when we talk from a joint distribution perspective, now, let's take two variables. Now, let's say the two variables are not following a normal distribution. So, the very first, first step which we, which we try to do is we try to transform them to standard normal distributions. Now, all of us love standard normal distribution, isn't it? Because the properties of standard normal distribution are so nice to handle and that it makes the overall math very, very comfortable. So all of us love standard normal distributions. That is what exactly we are going to do as a part of the Gaussian copula approach as well. So these variables are transformed to a standard normal distribution. We know by definition, uh, this is going to have a mean of zero and a variance of one for this distribution. Now, this transformation is done by mapping a percentile to percentile basis. Now, how exactly this is done, we'll be seeing it through a simple chart as well. Now, the overall joint distribution of these transformed standard normal variables will be used to determine the correlation between them because finally we are interested in the idea of correlated defaults and for that purpose we are working on this idea of joint distribution and this will also help us capture the dependence between the original set of variables because that way remember that you can switch between these two so that way we have our original set of variables we transform them in order to make our life easy we do our calculation but that way you have like a you can go back and forth. So that's the beauty of the copula setup as well. So look at it through a simple chart. So let's say we have two distributions, V1 and V2. Now, if you look at V1 and V2, and we don't know how what will be the name for that distribution. So naturally, we can't really put a name for that. So I've called this as some non-normal or an unknown distribution. Now, through this Gaussian copula approach, we are going to try and convert them into a certain distribution which we are very comfortable to handle. So something like a standard normal distribution. So we take our original distributions V1 and V2 and we transform them into a standard normal distribution. And we call them as U1 and U2. So that way we take V1, V2, we transform them into U1 and U2 respectively. So this mapping will ensure that Let's say one percentile point on V1 is transformed to one percentile point on U1 and so on for every percentile. So two percentile point on V1 is equal is transformed to two percentile point on U2, U1 and so on. The same thing we apply for V2 and U2 as well so that we have that kind of a transformation which has been done in sync. 
Now the transform variables u1 and u2 are assumed to be jointly following a bivariate standard normal distribution. And we can define a correlation for this particular joint distribution. Now let's try to understand one more interesting way in which multiple variables can be handled. Now the mathematical theory or the math foundation behind Gaussian copula is very, very deep. So that way uh, we are not going to be covering that because that is something which is not expected on the examination. So that way uh, we, are, we are scratching the surface, but this is something which will help us get familiarized with the Gaussian copula model, which is good enough for the FRM part one examination. Now, uh, I would like to extend this idea to what we call as a factor model. Now, there can be multiple variables which we are trying to work with. So that way, let's say there are three or four variables for which we want to work on the joint distribution. So naturally, it is going to be a bit, a bit challenging, isn't it? Because as the number of random variables go on increasing, then the complexity of the setup also increases. So at that time, many times we rely on what we call as a factor model. So a factor model is given in this way. So the distribution for UI is decomposed into two parts. So as a part of these two, we have two items which we'll like to introduce. One is the item F and other is the item ZI. Now the item F is something which we call as a factor which will impact all, or it's like a common factor which will impact all of the UIs. So we can imagine this to be like a systematic risk factor, something like a systematic risk factor which will impact all of UIs. And also it follows a standard normal distribution. So this is something which we are going to continue to stick to, the standard normality. And the term ZI, we can think of this as a specific component which will be, which will be affecting only UI but it will not affect any other UIs. So we can think of this as like an idiosyncratic component. So so see, F was like a systematic component, whereas ZI is more of an idiosyncratic or like a specific component. And again, that too is going to follow a standard normal distribution. Now, F and ZI are assumed to be uncorrelated. Also, the term alpha I is going to range between plus one and minus one. Now, let's try to understand this formula a bit better. So let's try to do some basic manipulations on this. Now, UI follows a normal distribution because we know that UI is the sum of two standard normal variables, F and ZI. So if you are combining two normal distribution, naturally the resultant is also going to be like a normal distribution. Now, let's try to work on the correlation because finally remember why we are taking all this effort to understand copula is because we are trying to understand correlated defaults. And for this purpose, we need to focus on the idea of expectations, right? So expected value of mean and also standard deviation because these two parameters are something which are going to define any kind of distribution which we look at, right? So standard formula for correlation, so understanding correlation between two variables. So let's stick to the two variable case for now so that it is easy for us to solve by hand. So correlation between UI, UJ is given by this formulation. Now we know that uh, we are sticking to standard normal distribution. So whatever variables we are looking at, they are going to follow standard normality. Now, when we say standard normal distribution, naturally we know that the mean is equal to zero and the variance is equal to one. So that's exactly what we do here. So mean also called as the expected value is zero and standard deviation is one. So therefore the correlation formula simplifies. So these terms vanish and we have correlation of ui uj is just the expected value of ui uj so writing this or expanding this right hand side so we have ex expected value of ui uj as this one so that factor model idea we also know that the system systematic risk or like a general risk or the general factor f it is uncorrelated with these specific factors right and also the specific factor ZI is uncorrelated with other Z 